Welcome to today's class of RF and uh, millimeter wave IC design. Uh, this is lecture number three of unit three, and we are discussing low noise amplifier topologies. So in yesterday's class, we started a uh, discussion of uh, various topologies. We started with CS amplifier, uh, but we stated that if you use a CS amplifier with a resistive load, definitely a resistor will add noise. Along with that, uh, the gain and the voltage swing are related because if you want more gain, you'll increase the value of RD and that will definitely affect the voltage swing. So we didn't do anything with CS with resistive load, but rather we started with an inductive load. Uh, and by, for the fact that inductance do not have any DC resistance, across, DC drop across it. So uh, the entire supply voltage will be available. And also we uh, told that we'll be focusing on two things or our principal targets are noise figure and input matching, noise figure gain and input matching. Uh, for that, we started with the input matching of this. We obtained the relation. We also concluded that we can make it equal to 50 ohm, but at some frequency, uh, you may also get a negative resistance, which is a potential uh, cause of instability. For that reason, we will not use a simple uh, CS with an inductive load. And the second second one, what we tried was with resistive feedback. The resistive feedback was ma mainly to make sure the, or to, uh, make uh, the input matching ease. So when we calculated the input impedance without uh, channel length modulation, it is one by GM, quite easy to match it by choosing an appropriate uh, width and length of MOSFET. Then we went and we verified the noise figure uh, calculation. Uh, for noise figure calculation, this is the expression what we use. And the very first thing is we'll find the gain, gain from input to output. After that, we uh, wrote the, uh, the noise contribution of each and every component and how we will express that noise component at the output by multiplying with the gain square and referring it back, uh, multiplying with the gain square to get the noise component at the output and also divide it with the gain and uh, 4K TRS uh, to refer it back or uh, to express noise figure with respect to the source resistance. So with that, we concluded um, with an approximate expression and that also shows that the noise figure will be slightly more than 3 dB. And in today's class, we will start with uh, the next topology. So again, in common source, we have different variants. One is common source, the degeneration. We'll come back to that. Um, bef um, be before that, we'll discuss uh, the topology of common gate. So I'll number this as the third one. And this is common gate amplifier. So in this common gate amplifier, I'm not going to discuss the resistive load for the same reason why we did not discuss a common source with resistive load. Here also we'll not start with a common gate with a resistive load, rather we will start with a common gate with an inductive load, right? So uh, the circuit diagram uh, is something like this. You have an inductive loaded common gate amplifier. So since it is common gate, uh, gate will be biased uh, to a voltage of VB. Say this is your transistor M1 and uh, you will be connecting the input to this. So I'm just uh, connecting the source resistance RS and we have the source voltage Vs here. This is the circuit. All right, so what I'll do is, uh, okay, I'll use the word V signal uh, to identify this is the signal source and since we have a source terminal, I'll use the notation Vs over there. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so we need to include, uh, as of now, I'm just leaving this as L1, but what happens here is um, we need to include the, the resistance of this inductance as a parallel component, I'll add it there as R1. And this is our output point, V out. And this is VDD. Right. So uh, again, at the output point, we'll have all the capacitive elements, say C1. And this L and C should operate at resonance so that uh, you will have only uh, the, the resistance of the inductance at the drain terminal. Now, uh, <clears throat> All right, so um, now how, how we start here is uh, same as before, we'll be evaluating uh, the input matching condition. So how, uh, whether input matching is possible with this, that is the first question. And the second question is we'll also evaluate the noise figure 
of this circuit with respect to the components which you can see on the screen so what do you think uh, the input impedance so whether this um, we know that our input impedance or our requirement is to uh, match it to a 50 ohm standard impedance and so what do you think about common gate stage is that easy or is it difficult uh, to match it with this input impedance of 50 for this common gate what do you think it will be difficult all right so why do you say it is difficult so because uh, along with one by gm we'll have rs and other resistances in series i mean as well and it will be harder to yeah so uh, here uh, uh, all right yeah Lilith. so but the thing is um, rs is actually the source resistance what we want to match it say to 50 ohm right so if i can match the resistance or the, the resistance seen from this side to the top if I can get that resistance equal to 50, uh, then a common gate is a, uh, is a, is a good candidate for uh, input matching. So compared to common um, source, common source, we are looking at the gate um, with the capacity of impedance. But what about here? What is the resistance seen at the source of a transistor? Or generally, uh, what is that one thing that differentiate between common gate and common source for a common source input impedance is infinity ideally right it's one by gm ah uh, yeah common gate the input impedance is very low so uh, that looks attractive here so common gate stage uh, the input impedance uh, is actually very low is very low and without uh, r not i can say it is actually equal to 1 by gm1 if m1 is an input transistor so if that is a case uh, the requirement what we have here is we need to uh, match the input resistance that is we need to do what, what we need to do here is since Rn is equal to 1 by Gm1 we need to make this 1 by Gm1 equal to Rs 1 by Gm1 should be made equal to Rs right so that looks like um, 50 that is 1 by Gm should be equal to 50 ohm uh, probably you will get a Gm of around 20 milliamps per volt right so uh, that looks like compared to the other topology input matching is easy in this case because of the inherent low input impedance of a common gate amplifier all right so um, yeah that is one thing which makes this common gate topology an attractive one uh, but uh, yes we do have some challenges that we'll see all right so um, so this i'm i'm just writing the input impedance as one by gm1 and the, what i'm stating here is matching this 1 by gm1 equal to the rs of, of the standard impedance of 50 ohm is comparatively easy right so uh, that means input matching is uh, done to some level right but all these things we didn't consider any non-ideality so input matching is done to some level now uh, let us find the noise figure of the circuit so as i told before if i want to find the noise figure of this circuit uh, i need to first write the gain expression so what do you think what is the gain of this circuit mm, maybe from i'll just mark this point as vs so what is the gain from the point vs to v out the at the at the load at the drain you have l and c and uh, when you operate that at, at this at a specific frequency uh, the l and c will be resonating and uh, only thing only component left out will be the resistance r1 so uh, what will be the gain from vs to v out or if i write uh, what is v out by vs what will be the gain any idea what is the gain of a common gate stage Any answers? Oh, I'm not audible. Hello. Yeah, nah, I got the answer. Yes. So am I not audible? Uh, all right. So I don't know. So did you miss something? I was telling about input matching. All right. Okay. Yeah, so the gain from point Vs to V out is simply Gm R1. 
right it is a common gate it is the, the gain is same as that of common gate uh, sorry uh, common uh, source with a difference of negative sign so v out by vs is gm into r1 and uh, if you look at so gm into r1 can also be written as r1 divided by rs because my uh, rs is equal to 1 by gm now this is from uh, from the point vs i'm just marking that point as here to this point v out now, if i want to write uh, the, the 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 total gain that is v out by v signal uh, so as you know uh, since we match this becomes r1 by 2rs because um, v signal at, at at the node vs the value will be half of v signal because of um, when it is matched properly right so i will write this expression or this gain expression is at uh, at the output resonant frequency or the frequency of operation of the amplifier need not be for all frequency but only uh, for the range of frequency where the amplifier operates right and uh, i hope this is also clear so this is our gain expression so av in this case is equal to r1 by 2rs now we can uh, start finding the noise figure of the circuit so how will you find the noise figure um, so let me let us uh, i'll go to the next page Yeah, so the components here, uh, where we need to consider one is the transistor, we need to consider transistors noise, then RS, the source resistance is there, which will be added as one in the noise figure expression, a uh, final expression. And um, yeah, then another uh, component is uh, the R1 component. Uh, so these are the noise sources. So what I will do here is, I'll write the noise figure expression by considering uh, each and every component. So in a similar way, how I have done for uh, the previous circuit. So first I'll write the noise figure of RS. So that will actually, um, I can write it as VN square. Let me just check what notation I have used there. Yeah. So I'm referring VN out of rs so i'm just directly writing the component as one uh, i hope you understand why i have uh, i did that now the second thing is noise figure of transistor m1 so i'll write it as vn out of m1 square and now to find that um, so you have the transistor here and we know that transistor's noise usually we express in the form of uh, i n of m1 square we'll express it as 4 k t gamma into g m this is how we generally express now the same uh, so this is your current spectral density now if you want to uh, convert this or now if you want to write this as a voltage at the gate of the transistor so let me uh, let me draw the figure like this by only considering the noise of the transistor m1 so generally we do uh, write this is rs this is r1 so generally we write uh, it as a component which is parallel to the um, parallel with between the points of drain and source the same thing can also be written by connecting it to the gate as a source and now what will be the value of this if i am writing it as a voltage source i n 1 square uh, is 4 k t gamma g m uh, so if i want to write in terms of uh, v n of m 1 square that means basically at the input side if you want to write uh, the same thing at the input uh, what we can do is uh, this 4 k t gamma into g m will be divided by g m square how, how is this we know that uh, the drain current is related to g m into vgs now if i want to write vgs it will be id divided by gm right so if i am modeling the noise voltage noise as a voltage in series with the gate now basically it is um, connected to uh, to the gate so when you write that you need to divide it divided by gm square because the quantities are square square quantities right so uh, by considering this i can actually model it as 4 kt gamma by gm so that is the uh, equivalent noise voltage at the input side. 
now how how can we write the um, the contribution of m1 noise at the output so this is the output point so generally how do we write if i have a noise voltage i need to so if i uh, refer this to the input no now from from this point from the input point that is from this point to this point if you know the gain i can multiply this noise voltage directly by the gain and write the component at the output side because anyway we need to write the uh, uh, voltage component at the output so how how do i go about this i need to write this as uh, 4kt gamma by gm which is the voltage at the input side this should be multiplied by the gain from uh, this point gate to output so i'll write this as gain from gate to drain <clears throat> uh, whether this is clear what i am doing can i get some response in the chat can i get some more response Srinikhil, are you there? Srinikhil. Hello, Srinikhil, are you there? Srinikhil, are you there? Srinikhil, hello. All right. Okay. So Virupakshi, Virupakshi, are you there? Yes, sir. All right. Yatish. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Sharat. Yes, sir. Sohan. Yes, sir. Vibha. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Yeah, so uh, what we have done here is we uh, first we wrote the uh, noise uh, current noise spectral density and uh, referred it to the gate. And now I need to uh, multiply that with the gain from gate to drain in order to uh, get the component at the output. So now to find the gain from gate to drain, can you tell me what is the gain from here? Uh, that is from gate to drain. What is the gain? If you look at this structure, it is same as that of a uh, common source with degeneration uh, because you can see there is a source resistance and there is a drain resistance R1. So without channeling the modulation, you can directly apply the formula of the gain of a common source with degeneration, yes. Uh, so common source with degeneration. Uh, so how will you apply? It is basically, uh, we'll write it as minus R1 divided by, minus R1 divided by the resistance seen at the source path, right? So the resistance seen at the source path is you have, looking from here, you have one by GM and then you have this RS resistance as well. So it is one by GM one plus RS. This is the gain. Now I need to uh, multiply this uh, at the output. I need to actually, I need to do this square, right? So when I do that, um, let me write it here. Uh, so Vn, sorry, yeah. So Vn out of M1 square is equal to 4 kT gamma by Gm1 into R1 by 1 by Gm1 plus Rs the whole square. This is the uh, co the component which will come at the output side. So this can be further. You can simplify this and can you uh, tell me what is the Simplified value of this Vn out square. Yeah, uh, Pratap, it is minus R1 by the, the total resistance seen in the source path. So you need to add 1 by Gm also to that. I hope you got that. Yeah, so if you simplify this, uh, what will be the expression? Uh, so you get uh, 4 kT gamma GM1 R1 square by 1 plus RS GM1 whole square. Yeah, so even after simplification, you are telling? 
yes sir, only the gm1 term will get cancelled right yeah you can actually because gm1 and um, gm1 is same as gm1 is equal to 1 by rs right so uh, you can sir, or uh, in the denominator you will basically get a 4 because 1 by gm1 plus rs um you will get so 1 by gm is 2 uh, it is rs again so it is 2 rs so it will be r1 by rs uh, the whole square again so, there is one uh, one by gm1 on, on the uh, on the outside the bracket right so your four will get cancelled uh, yeah it is kt kt delta r, r1 square by it's rs gamma it is gamma uh, sorry gamma r1 square by rs yes r1 square by rs thank you so this is the uh, output uh, noise of the transistor m1 now uh, if you look at the third component you have one more component uh, that is uh, r1 so the noise figure of r1 is directly at the output so i can write at the output side uh, directly it has 4 kt into r1 right so now the next step is uh, to uh, add to uh, to uh, obtain the complete noise figure of the circuit i can write the noise figure as uh the, the the noise figure of uh, resistance i'll directly add it as 1 plus you have transistors transistors is you have kt gamma r1 square by rs divided by 4 kt rs into Uh, the voltage gain of the circuit what we obtained before so i am just marking it as av square plus 4 kt r1 divided by 4 kt rs into av square so uh, can you simplify and let me know what is the final expression you are getting as noise figure any ants any simplified answer so 1 plus gamma plus 4 rs by r1 uh yes it is 1 plus gamma plus 4 rs by r1 yes that is true that is right yeah, thank you so this is a noise figure expression right so now uh, again if you substitute the value of gamma uh, we, again on, on like what technology are you using uh, depending on that th there is a possibility that you will uh, get a gain sorry a noise figure greater than 3 db but definitely we can work out there are certain techniques where uh, by which we can um reduce this noise figure to some extent uh, so that we will see uh, shortly after discussing the next architecture so what we did here is we have taken the common gate amplifier uh, with respect to input matching it is uh, easy because uh, common gate is having a low input impedance so we can make use of that inherent advantage and uh, with respect to noise figure noise figure is coming slightly more than 3 db or it it may reach 3 db if we uh, if we are not uh, paying proper attention in the design uh, design stage right uh, all right but um, again we'll come back to this common gate stage we'll uh, see some more modification of this before that we'll uh, also look at another uh, the next topology uh, which is common so, source yes so i have a doubt in the last expression 1 plus gamma plus how do you get 4 there mm, yeah i didn't do simplification here av should be uh, what you what you need to do is you need to substitute mm. uh, wherever there is a rs you will sub, you can substitute uh, 1 by gm and you see here i think mm. this term there is a 2 and 2 square will become 4 over there 
A B square. Okay. Yeah, A B square. All right. Any any other questions? No, sir. Yeah. So now we will uh, look at the the last topology. What we will see in this course, which is common source with degeneration. Or if you remember in the first class, uh, I somewhere stated that yeah, so I stated that uh, LNA must provide a 50 ohm input impedance. But what we are actually looking for is uh, we should be able to do that without adding a physical resistance of 50. So we'll try to use or try to um, limit the number of resistance which are getting. Uh, add it to the system. So uh, this here itself I'll write, we are actually looking for a resistive input without physical resistors. So why? Uh, because if you add a physical resistor, that will add a resistor noise to the system, which will directly uh, add to the noise figure. So that is why we cannot uh, do that. So we cannot add physical resistors directly. Okay, so uh, for this, what we will do is uh, we have looked at uh, the the regular common source topology. <clears throat> so I'll we'll start with uh, this common source with a uh, with degeneration, but I'm not defining what component we will add there. I'm uh, like generalizing it to an impedance, a source impedance, which is of value Zs. And now what we will do is we will try to find the input impedance looking at the uh, gate when there is a source impedance of Zs. So I request all of you to draw the equivalent circuit and find what is the input impedance when you see a source impedance of Zs. So we will get the uh, generic expression and after that we will uh, substitute the various components like a resistance, capacitance or inductor in place of Zs and we'll see how uh, when you change the components from resistor to inductor or inductor to capacitor how the input impedance is getting affected and how easy it is to match the input to a specific value. So for that, uh, you need to draw the equivalent circuit. So I'm just taking the equivalent circuit of transistor here. I'm including the capacitance uh, CGS. And here we have this GM VGS. I'm again neglecting channel length modulation for the time being. We'll uh, consider the channel length modulation again back. And I'm also neglecting the CGD capacitance because we are just looking at the um, input side. So I'm just neglecting even the CGD capacitance. I'm only looking at the elements which is present at the input side. So now uh, what I will do here is I'll add a, a source. I mark this as Vx, current as Ix. And what I will get from here is the input impedance. I'm, if I look from here, what I'll see is the input impedance. And this is marked as Zs. And this node is marked as Vs. As of now, uh, so at the low, at the at the drain, I'm just shorting it for now. And uh, we will see how uh, it will be modified later when, uh, when you add an appropriate load. Right. So uh, the target or what I need to find here is Z in and Z in can be obtained by finding what is Vx by Ix. So how will I start? So let me, uh, I'll only proceed here. So first I'll write what is my Vs voltage. So Vs can be written as the gate voltage here minus, uh, yeah, this is your Vgs voltage. I can write it as gate voltage, which is Vx minus Vgs. Now, if I want to write the uh, current at the source terminal Is, I can directly write it as the voltage there divided by, divided by the impedance which is connected at that point. Right. Now, 
uh, is can be further written as so i'll write it here is can be further written as vs is vx minus vgs divided by zs and which can also be written as what if i look at is 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 actually the current flowing here so that is a sum of uh, the current uh, to both the currents one is coming from this side another is the transistor current so i can also write this as uh, gm vgs plus ix is can also be written as uh, the ix current and the gm vgs current so with all these equations, if you substitute and get the value of Vx by Ix, we can proceed in this way. So Vx minus Vgs. I'm just taking, okay, I'm just numbering these equations here. Let me number this equation as equation number one. Sorry, this is one and this is two. And I substituted one into and I got this equation. This is equation number three. Now, this is four, and I'm substituting four in three and cross multiplying. So I'll write it as Vx minus Vgs as Is into Zs. So that is equal to Gm Vgs plus Ix into Zs. All right, where you added CGS. Uh, uh, okay, Lalit. So what I have done is, uh, CGS is actually the uh, capacitance between the gate and the source. So I just added CGS over there. <coughs> and I'm finding the imp impedance looking at the gate. CGD I neglected for now, as the value of CGD is small. Okay, where, in which case, in the previous uh, previous example, in the previous uh, circuit, in the common gate is uh, what you're asking. All right, so if you look at the common gate configuration, uh, we are looking at the source terminal and you, your gate is uh, DC bias and gate will be grounded for such case, right? Gate is so- uh, I'm, I'm talking about uh, common source and the previous resistor feedback and all. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, even in that one second. Yeah. So in that case, since the resistance resistive element is present there, uh, your mm, impedance will be more more likely. It will be uh, directly from that resistance because mm, if you look at this, you no, know, you have you have an explicit element added there between the gate. Yeah, but and if the, capacitance is present at the gate yes, source, then there'll yes, be a path, sir. right? Capacitance is yeah. You you have a capacitance even here. Yes. So in the detailed analysis, definitely you can take. So in the first cut on the first order design, uh, in order to directly write the um, input impedance, I wrote it as one by GM. So uh, here the difference is, if you look at this circuit, here we do not have any other element present here, which is you know, which is interacting between the input and output or anything like that. Only the uh, the single element we added to the circuit is at the source. So, so no resistor of no Z yeah, is going to no be present during VD to drain. Yes, no other elements are uh, physically present. That means we ha we haven't added in the circuit, but the inherent resistances are there. Now, when okay. you find the input impedance in this case, uh, if you are if you are not considering CGS, I need to consider the input impedance as infinity, right? But that is not the case. Is that so, so whatever topologies we learned as of now, we considered that and we went with gain and the other parameters. Yes, yes. Here you yeah. suddenly introduced it, so I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, uh, yeah. Even, even in the, yeah, I think in this case also I didn't introduce. Yes, yeah. Uh, so here, um, actually, so for all the designs, when you do the actual design, uh, the we need to consider the value of CGS or CGS, CGD, all those values we need to consider because. Uh, the reason for considering all the capacitance value is, uh, see, uh, if you remember, I was telling that the voltage gain here is at output resonant frequency. So uh, we will add uh, or the inductor is added here in such a way that we'll calculate all the capacitance at this specific node and will uh, make this LC resonate at that specific frequency so that there will not be the effect of L and C. Right. So. 
uh, for whatever design we do, we need to consider all the capacitance. Then only we can appropriately get the value of a suitable inductor and resonate the L and C at that specific frequency. So for the, for the proper design, we need to add the value of capacitance. But even without that, I could actually prove the noise figure here and uh, the other things. Uh, adding capacitor will actually little add your, um, what is it, the complexity in the analysis. Only that is the difference. Yeah, I got your point, Lelith, because I, since I did not consider, and now all of a sudden I'm considering. Yeah, so in this case, if I'm not considering, uh, there are no other elements uh, connected here, and that will directly give you a feel that, okay, you have an infinite impedance. Okay, sir, fine. All right. Understood. <clears throat> so uh, now you got Vx, yeah. So from this, if you further write um, this as, sorry, so it is Vx minus Vgs is this, or I can write Vx is equal, I can take Vgs to the, uh, to the other side, and I have 1 plus Gm Zs into Vgs plus Ix into Zs. I have just rearranged the formula. And uh, now I need, I need this expression uh, only with Vx and Ix as the current and voltage variable. I need to eliminate other voltages. So since I have Vgs here, VGS I'll eliminate as uh, the current flowing uh, through CGS as IX into 1 by S CGS. So with that, uh, if I substitute, I'll get the expression for VX as VX can be written as 1 plus GM into ZS into IX by S CGS plus IX into ZS. And from this, I can write what is my Z in. Z in is Vx by Ix, which is again equal to, uh, yeah, you'll get the first term as Zs plus the second term as uh, Ix by Xcgs. So I'll take Ix, that's it. So it is 1 by Scgs. And the third term as Gm into Zs divided by Scgs. So this is the input impedance. All right, so I'll just rewrite this equation uh, here. So what I got here is input impedance as Zs plus one by S CGS plus GM Zs by S into CGS. This is the expression for my input impedance. Now uh, the next step or how we will proceed from here is uh, we will try out uh, in for ZS, we will substitute first a resistance RS, you can um, call it as RS. Second, you can uh, substitute a capacitance CS and then later you can add an inductance as LS and see what is the impedance coming or what is the impedance, uh, what is the input impedance when you substitute a resistance, capacitance or an inductance and from that, we will conclude that which element can be added at the source as a degeneration element so that you can design a proper low noise amplifier. After that, we will find the noise figure of the circuit. We'll, we'll complete the circuit diagram and then we will come back and see the design procedure for common gate LNA and uh, the assignment will be uh, a design of a common source with an inductive degeneration LNA. All right, so I'm not going to do uh, this uh, resistance, capacitance, and inductance element now. I will leave that as a homework, and in next class, in tomorrow's class, we will see that. So for today, I'm winding up here. If you have any questions, you can ask now.